Okay, I just had a bright idea. Well, I took this outside and I dumped that vile looking fluid out onto the roses. You know, that's not toxic. I so I suppose some of the EPA would say it's toxic, but really it's it's just water with the washing soda. So that's like uh, dumping the dishwasher out, and then there's rust in it, of course. So I put that on the roses. You know, roses love rust. So uh, don't tell the EPA and send their agents that have nothing better to do because there's a gigantic organization bloated with tens of thousands of agents looking for something to do for job security. But, you know, I looked in here and it's not looking good. Matter of fact, it doesn't look any better than what I started with, even though I took a lot of rust out of there. But, and I may still have to give up on this. But uh, what I'm going to do for now is, since I cannot contain the fluid, I'm going to immerse the whole thing in this little Rubbermaid container and uh, bring the water level up to about here. And I don't care if it leaks, but the electrolysis itself should only be uh, going on inside the tank. So do you understand what I mean? The whole thing's going to be filled now. We'll see how that works, because otherwise there's so many holes in here that I, I just can't deal with it. And if you're able to look at the bottom here, now it's wet because I, I also ran the garden hose through here, but you know this is just like uh, I showed this to you before, there's nothing left there and I suppose the entire lower spot here where the water would have collected is, is that way. If I tapped it with an ice pick, which I'm not going to do, but it, you know, it was leaking over here. It looked pretty bad. So that that's what I'm going to do now. Now, went garage sale on last Saturday, and my wife bought... I love my wife. She bought five or six containers for three or four dollars. They had stacks and stacks of that stuff. I'm thinking, what are you doing with all that stuff? There's a lid for that, too. I suppose it cost three or four dollars, but that probably was fifty cents at a garage sale. And it looks like it's new, but it won't look like it's new when I'm done. But what I will do here is uh, uh, don't tell her I took that. Actually, I did tell her. I said, "Where are those? Where were those containers?" And she said, "Oh, right there." I said, "I'm going to take one." She said, "I don't care." So I'll ruin that and see what happens. Now look what I've done. I've got uh, the tank filled to the brim and well it would be to this level what you see here in the Rubbermaid container because water is going to seek its own level and they'll, they'll be equal here in a minute when they equalize and <clears throat> put the uh, insulator back in here. So uh, we'll see how that works. You know when I make these videos people say uh, why didn't you do this or why didn't you do that? Well because I didn't think of it and when I got 10,000 people watching these videos I get all kinds of ideas some of them are great ideas but they're ideas that never came uh, to my mind you know I'm not Einstein I'm just an old shop teacher you know I got a neighbor that bugs the heck out of me do you remember Thorny on the Ozzie and Harriet show he had a neighbor by the name of Thorny that would just come over and pester him and bug him but I got a neighbor that I'll always say, uh, he'll ask me something, and I say, well, I don't know how to do that, or I don't know what you're talking about. And he says, well, you ought to know. You went to college. You ought to know everything. Well, you know, you don't learn everything in college. Most of what I know, I learned in kindergarten. There's a book by that name, you know. But uh, I'm not Aristotle. So, yes, I need some help, and I need ideas, and... Uh, mm -hmm when you're real close to a job like this sometimes these ideas never occur to you so what I'm gonna do here then of course is hook this back up electrically here momentarily and then uh, show you a shot of that and we gotta let it set for a while and see how this works the red is to the anode and the negative is to the part itself and if I got this thing figured out correctly the actual electrolysis is taking place inside the tank not outside the tank and uh, I think you understand now why I got the whole doggone thing immersed in this this Rubbermaid tank. And I'll be back in about uh, six or eight hours and we'll see how this is collecting uh, the rust. 
uh, remember that I, this uh, anode here cannot touch the bottom of the tank or it will ground out so I have it suspended just a half inch or something off the bottom of the tank it, because otherwise it would be a short circuit. Now I would love to have <clears throat> many anodes in there like uh, you've seen me do in other videos on the way that Shop Dog Sam does it but uh, we're just going through a little hole here in the top and that's the best I can do but uh, I'll be doing this probably for about a week now to see how this works out. I'm out in my old garage now and this is the Vespa body. If I could turn back the hands of time uh, three weeks I wouldn't have bought this thing. So I'm already uh, having, well uh, I've had uh, buyer's remorse on the way home as I told you but uh, it's setting in even a little deeper now. But that aside, I'll take off the luggage carrier here. And the large hole you see there is where the gas tank fits. And you can visualize now the, the shape of that and why there was a flange around that uh, gas tank that I'm working on down in the basement. So, if I cannot ever get that thing rust free. My plans are to take this or a similar one but this by uh, pure serendipity will fit in there. Make a bracket or something probably like that. You know and, and I got a good rust free tank right there so why am I wasting my time I don't know but I think what I will do is probably even though I continue to work on the other one that this will be the one that I initially use because it's got a nice hole in the bottom where I can put a fitting and there just seems to be plenty of room down in there and uh, why this thing has two openings I do not know. But the seat, of course, fits over here, the driver's seat, and then the luggage carrier, as you just saw, also has a cushion, and those are brand new cushions I showed you in one of the other videos. But uh, that's my, uh, my tentative plan, and this is certainly my backup. In many of my projects where I have worked on tractors and different things like that, I have put on temporary gas tanks because there is no such thing as buying an old vehicle or an old tractor or anything with an engine that does not have problems with the gas tank. There, it, there just is no such thing. So uh, I have run into this problem innumerable times and as a matter of fact that's why I have I bought this along with a bunch of other gas tanks one time for I think 25 cents each just so I would have them in stock for applications similar to this. I know I'm getting off topic from the gas tank here but there is the possibility of a of me aborting this entire project if I cannot get this engine running. This is the Vespa engine. Now I cannot uh, install this in the uh, in the body at this time to, to attempt to run it because it it's integral with the body. So I'm going to have to devise some type of engine stand where I can uh, mount this on the stand get the kickstarter on it, get the carburetor on it, and attempt to run it. If it does not run or it requires too much work, I'm definitely getting out of this thing. But, uh, so I believe that's what I'll do. Now this engine was slightly stuck. It took me quite a bit of uh, uh, persuasion to get it uh, unstuck. I mean it wasn't like an old tractor out in the field, but it would not rotate, so I took this spark plug out <coughs> squirted uh, fluid in there, worked it back and forth, and then eventually it, it did uh, uh, move. So it, so it is not stuck, but to me that just means that it has sat for a long time. Longer than I was led to believe when I made the purchase. But uh, I think this is really the, the thing that I need to do first in approaching this entire restoration is, is to make sure that the engine is a viable, good engine. But remember, this thing is 60 years old, so, uh, you know, it's probably worn out. Most of them uh, were worn out, you know, they were owned by teenagers. Matter of fact, remember, I owned one when I was a teenager, and, and uh, I beat the heck out of it, you know. You know I did. All teenagers try to ruin everything that they own. 
Good morning. It is 24 hours later, and let's see what we got here. Quite a nice accumulation. I'll clean that off real well and lately I like to put it on the sander and get her down to bare metal again and I'm going to continue with this now for a week and I will not show it every day because the uh, process is painstakingly slow but it uh, goes on without me having to watch it so okay that's it for now it is now seven days later after the last video clip and uh, I've had this thing running constantly ever since and at some point there a few days ago I switched from uh, the round anode to uh, a piece of angle iron like this. I think it had more surface area and that, that was my intent. And let's unclip this here. I'll scrape that in a second. But the reason for that hillbilly tape on there is that was to insulate it because I had to take that little uh, bushing out of here because the angle iron wouldn't fit through that. So that's the reason for that. Also to keep it from grounding out on the bottom I got some wire ties. Those are those two rabbit ears you see stuck in there. But for now that's all I'm going to do at least in this position. And I got a rather large quantity of rust here that I have removed. Look at that. My main worry, of course, is is there anything left of the bottom of this tank? So I'm going to uh, dump this uh, fluid out of here and go outside and I'm going to rinse it real well in the yard with a garden hose. So I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll I will examine the inside with my pen light and see what it looks like. I rotated the gas tank uh, 90 degrees and put in a fresh piece of angle iron. Here's the old one. And uh, after a day or so I will rotate it 180 degrees. That way I'm pretty much covering the entire inside of the uh, tank. Now watch the ammeter here when I hook up uh, the, the clamp here with a fresh clean piece of angle iron. It'll really jump. Won't stay there very long though. It'll rapidly go down. But I found that I really need to clean the uh, anode from time to time down to bare metal or put in a new one and I only I had a limited amount of, of uh, material I can use. It's a couple days later since the last video clip and uh, old tubal cane's getting kind of discouraged and this is the end of my electrolysis. I'm not going to do any more on it and I'll talk about the condition of the tank in just a second but this is how much material I removed from the inside plus the initial quarter cup or half cup whatever it was of, uh, of dried rust and dust when I first started the project and then I got a little pile out in the grass that I uh, got out of there when I rinsed this with a hose a few minutes ago so let's go take a look at that quantity this is what I dumped out a few minutes ago and uh, they're rather large pieces some of them like this pretty good chunk of rust or scale now I gotta clean this out of the yard before I hit it with a mower by the way this is the original uh, model number plate off the scooter itself it even looks familiar from when I was 16 but mine was two years newer than this but Larry had bought a lot of parts for this including this is a gasket here I guess with the label and this is what the cap should look like that's brand new but as you 
remember from a little while ago I told you that someone had soldered in a new neck here. It looks like that's off of a radiator. And that's all botched up, but this is really what belongs. But this gas tank actually is just too bad to even consider saving. And I've looked in here with my pen light, you know, and it's just awful. Still, after two weeks of electrolysis, either the electrolysis is a failure, but I sure did remove a lot of, of rust. But it just looks awful yet. And I know some of you have talked about tumbling and I have tumbled many times so I know exactly what you're talking about and I may still make a fixture and uh, put some drywall screws or something in here and rotate it off the end of my lathe, the, uh, the outboard side of the headstock. I have tumbled large ones. Maybe I mentioned this earlier in this video but this video is so long. Uh, so I may do that yet but to start with I am abandoning, abandoning this for now and going to use that plastic one just in case I never do finish this thing but uh, down here of course you can see the uh, holes in here and I, and I suppose this whole thing is really thinned out so it needs to be um, coated on the inside but I'm, I'm not going to do it, at least not for now. I want to get on with this project and I spent too much time on this and I've been through a lot of restorations and uh, I know you can just get stonewalled and, and discouraged too. So uh, enough of this for right now. This is going to conclude this video on the Vespa and uh, I may get back to this. But another thought that I have is to take a saw Ah, there goes the phone. It's my broker. Saw off this flange here all the way around and somehow or another fasten this top piece which is tapered and curved onto that plastic gas tank that I have shown you and uh, uh, adapt it because this is, you know, this is really bad. You wonder how this thing was stored all those years, you know, that there was water in there or what, what cause that because the rest of the body and other things uh, on this Vespa do not show that kind of corrosion. So that's that's my thought. What, where was this? Was this out of the uh, scooter and laying in behind a garage someplace or something that it could be that uh, bad a shape? Okay, this is Tubal Kane saying that's it for this video and I'll watch for other videos as I work on this. All-State Vespa. So long for now.